So today we are going to talk about the locking and unlocking of the knee joint. And locking happens in the final 30 degree extension. And here you can see the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. Medial meniscus is longer compared to the lateral meniscus. And that is seen on the upper surface of the tibia. This is the right tibia, this is the medial aspect, lateral, this is the anterior, posterior. This is showing the upper surface of the tibia where you have, you can see the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. Now, at the beginning of the extension, now here the knee joint is in flex position. The posterior rounded aspect of the femoral condyles will be lying on the posterior ends of the meniscus. Now, at the start of the extension, the femur will roll over, over the upper surface of the tibia. After a point, the posterior joint capsule, the oblique popliteal ligament and PCL becomes taut and so further anterior gliding will not happen. At this position, the femur will start to spin anteriorly and when in the last 30 degrees of extension, uh, the lateral femoral condyle has already reached the anterior part of the lateral meniscus but the medial femoral condyle falls short and in this last 30 degree, to complete the extension, the femur will rotate medially along the axis of the ACL by the vasus medialis. This final 30 degree extension where the femur rotates medially is called the locking of the knee joint. Now this is the extended position. Now to start flexion, the knee joint has to undergo unlocking. Unlocking is done by the popliteus muscle. Unlocking means the initial lateral rotation of the femur. And after that initial lateral rotation, that is unlocking, the femur starts to spin back and after that it will roll back. That is the flexion. This is the posterior aspect of the knee joint. You can see the popliteus originating from the lateral contact within the capsule and during unlocking, the popliteus contract and there is lateral rotation of the femur.